All right, hey everyone. Uh, in uh, round six here of the ETS, uh, this will be live streamed, uh, so we get a, a bit of a delay because um, we have to have the spectator in. Uh, so I think uh, we decided to keep this hand because we're up against a three color uh, aggro deck. Uh, three color, very similar to what we played back in round three, I believe. Um, we decided to keep this hand because it has all of our colors sorted out. It's got two really good cards in it and a couple really bad cards. We don't really want these channel of Tempests. Um, I think I'm going to scry for a land on top, hopefully. Uh, there we go. Uh, the reason I didn't want to play the land uh, on turn one was that I didn't, if I drew a land, I wanted to scry any future lands to the bottom. I do really didn't want to get up to six right away. Uh, I did want to get up to five, though. Uh, but unfortunately, now with drawing two channel tempests, I really want to get up to eight. Uh, so this will be a little bit rough if he has a quick start. Uh, luckily, his deck doesn't have very many quick starts. And he did redraw. So maybe he has a, you know, not a terribly aggressive start here. Uh, that's a guy that will just slay. Uh, it's not the best thing in the world, but it's, uh, it's fine. It keeps the pressure off of us. If he plays like a Vadius here, that's not great. A Valken Forcer I can live with. We can catch that guy up in a harsh rule at some point. Well, there's no reason to, uh, uh actually... I think there is. I think just to keep our life total absolutely pristine, uh, there is a reason to uh, to spot remove that guy. Especially because I know he has a lot of weapons. He's got uh, Hammer of Might, Deep Forge Plate, and I don't want to give him any options to be able to cast those on, on relevant units. Uh, or at least keep him off as long as possible until I can hit him with harsh rules. Uh, that's actually a really insane top deck. Uh, not going to lie about that one. Uh, let's just play the Waystone, get our Aegis up. Not that Aegis really matters here. Uh, he does have Torches, which I suppose are possible that he might have. Uh, that's really the only thing. Uh, he might have a Protect here, but I feel like if he had a Protect, he would have just main phased it to attack me for 5. Or 6, actually. So let's just Harsh Rule. I doubt he has Protect. Yeah. Play Crest. Uh, this is lined up extremely well. Hell yeah, keep that on top. And we'll just channel Tempest and a channel Tempest, and that should win the game. We've got, uh, you know, plenty of removal. <laughs> Alright, he sees where this one's going. <laughs> That's fair. Alright, so let's hop over to the sideboard. Um, we'll clone our uh, sideboarded version, and we'll go and edit it. So, what do we want to do here? Well, obviously we don't need sabotages. Um, setbacks aren't even that great. Vision Austerity is obviously no good. Island's Choice is good because it hits a lot of his things. We don't need Reign of Frogs. Um, Azendel's Gift is no good. Um, and honestly, I can probably cut a decent number of these Lightning Storms because he doesn't have too many things that die to it. In fact, nothing, really. Uh, let's just cut all but one here. Or I guess it's better to cut Setbacks, keeping the Storms, because they can at least pop Aegises. Uh, but other than that, uh, this is a pretty good list. Okay, um, there might be a little bit of delay once we get into game before Zenerath lets me know that I can start. Uh, he's the guy who's uh, spectating and to then live broadcast onto the mainstream. Just reconfirm this one that has the three in it. That's the one we want to be using. Yes, indeed. So overall, I think this is actually one of our better matchups. Um, they're an aggro deck, but they're a slow aggro deck. They don't they play a lot of hard hitting twos, threes, and four drops. Not a lot of ones and twos, um, and not a lot of charge units that you know other than three cost guys. Uh, so our spot removal lines up quite well against their slower start, and they rely on Aegis units like Vadius and Shelter Wing. But then we have things like Vara's Favor as well as relic weapons like Duelist Blade in order to uh, kill Vadius's as well. And they also rely uh, pretty heavily on uh, weapons. So if we are doing a lot of spot removal, then hopefully they don't have a guy and they can uh, get those weapons stranded in their hand rather than just having you know a bunch of more guys. Unfortunately, they're not very weak to our lightning storms and heart and uh, devastating setbacks. But overall, I still think it's a, a pretty solid matchup for us. Get the sideboard one. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so this hand is not great. Uh, we obviously have, um, you know, two channel tempests, which we really don't need. They, they don't help us to stabilize the game. And we don't even have double shadow either. So we're going to redraw this hand. Uh, this hand is not a whole lot better. I actually had considered siding out the last word. Uh, let me double check with Xenorath if we can start. Or can we start? Just get confirmation here, and then we'll probably just play our... Te uh, probably our Huru banner, actually, because we do want to get... Um, do want to get justice right away or sorry not justice primal so that we can lightning strike um potentially on well i guess since we're going first we don't really need on turn two uh but i'll play this all right so if we can get to turn five we'll have a harsh rule uh death strikes fine i wish it was an extract but at this point another spot removal will help to pop off an aegis we should be in pretty good shape Uh, this card is good. I don't have any lands, though. I think if by the time we get to that point, we'll just have a Celestial Omen. So I'm going to put that on bottom. That card is good in this matchup, for sure. But we don't have the power to cast it. And I'd rather have, um, you know, I don't, I'd rather not get stuck with a bunch of six-cost cards in my hand. Try to Lightning Strike this guy. He, uh, he does not have Protect. Good. Commando. I can live with that. Uh, I think we're just gonna... I don't know, we'll see. Channel Tempest, gotta put that on bottom. Uh, I think I'm just gonna slay this guy. I don't... If I had Guaranteed Harsh Rule next turn, I wouldn't. But we don't have Guaranteed Harsh Rule next turn. So I'd rather just keep this board nice and tidy. Kothan, sure. Uh, since he has two mana up, I think I'll wait to try to death... Oh, no, nope, okay. Not gonna wait to Death Strike. Actually, I will wait, because uh, now if he plays a weapon on somebody, I can Death Strike the guy with the weapon. And if he doesn't, I can just Lightning Strike the Kothan. Who's currently a bigger threat. Shelter Wing. That's fine. Uh, I think we'll just uh, pass here. And then if he plays a weapon on Shelter Wing, we'll Death Strike off the Aegis and then Harsh Rule it. And uh, even if not, we're still going to Death Strike off the Aegis. wonder if he has a second Protect. He does have a fast spell of some sort. Unseal, okay. That's fine. Now, hopefully he doesn't have an Unseal for the Harsh Rule. We'll see. Yeah, I'll just harsh rule. Looks like he does not. Okay. He might still have protect. Uh, oh no, if he had protect, he, he would have had a stop. So he does not have protect. Um, I guess we're only afraid here of like a hammer of might. Alpine tracker. Interesting. That hurts, but not that much. I'm just going to use this grab a thunderstrike dragon. And that should stabilize the board. We'll be able to cast it next turn. Champion of Fury is annoying because we're not beat on a seven here. We could still potentially lose to a to a big weapon, I guess. I guess I can describe a harsh rule. It's probably our best bet. Yeah, I'll describe a harsh rule. So this is a little unfortunate. If he draws an untapped power, I'm just dead. But if he doesn't, still alive. Uh, that's gonna hurt. We're still alive though. We're still fine. We're still at one. Or no, actually, he just kills us. We're at nine. Go down to six. All right, we're just dead here. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this last word has just been stranded in our hand all game. Uh, I guess I could have played it slightly differently. I could have grabbed a Thunderstrike Dragon. Um, 
And then I could block it onto one, then I play a second one. That still loses because he drew another unit. But at the time, it seemed seemed fine to grab. Yeah, I guess either way, I was dead. So, oh well. I'm just double-check sideboarding real quick. Uh, still pretty sure I'm going to keep the same lineup here. Yeah, I think this is fine. Or no, I, I'm going to cut a last word and add a lightning storm. Because we have Thunderstrike Dragons to win the late game. We should be fine. Uh, that's unfortunate. I mean, we, we did win the die roll there, which was pretty good. I felt like we were in great shape. Um, but he had, a he had a lot of resilient threats and, and we were able to burst us down. That Alpine tracker did, did a lot of work. Uh, you know, it really dealt like seven damage. Whereas if he had a non-charge unit it would have dealt, you know, a whole lot less it would have only dealt like three or four, which would have kept me alive an extra turn. And then I could have grabbed a dragon instead. Oh well. On game three, he wins the die roll. So we're going to have to keep a... Well, not this kind of a hand. I'm going to have to redraw that one. Only one power in it. Sand's a bit better. I mean, it's got strategize. And it's got a lot of early interaction. Uh, I'll just wait for Manuas to start. Um, I think I'll just play tap land. Yeah, nothing much to decide here. Uh, probably just gonna strategize on two unless he plays um. I guess he can't even play a Kothan, right? He plays a Champion of Glory. Okay, maybe we just Lightning Storm just him while we can. Yeah, let's do that. Just do a good old one for one. I could have got a lot more out of it, apparently. Well, that's fine. We'll still lightning strike the second guy. And let's get a scry on. It's not a primal influence. I think I'm just going to bottom it. We already have five, and we can cycle. If it was a primal influence, I might keep it. Because I know we need more primal. Let's just strike this guy down, though. Looks like he's stuck on primal as well. That's got to feel good. Uh, Crest, Duelist Blade on top. Great card in this matchup. Keeps our face Aegis, kills his, his Aegis units, and he is power screwed. It sucks to win that way. I'll definitely say that, but hey, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> Just overwrite our face Aegis, bash him, play Thunderstrike Dragons. It's unfortunate. But that's the nature of playing a three color deck. Sometimes you get color screwed. And you can't quite uh you know can't quite deploy all of your cards the way you want to. I mean he finally found his power, but it's gonna be way too little, way too late. He gave us two turns of, of free wheel in here. Attack like that, play dragon, play the banner, and uh, that's that's game over. All right, so uh, we are six and zero in ETS. Uh, this game was, or uh, this match was, uh, kind of a non-game to end it, but I ain't complaining. We're six and zero. Feels good, man.